hear this week's uh, Here and Now with uh, Steve Struggle, giving us an insight into the American scene. So what's happening in this, uh, this supposedly great United States of America now? Well, I want to say greetings to all the viewers of our program. Thank you for uh, tuning in. I hope you'll please hit the like button and share with your friends and allies so you can get more people watching the program and participating in conversations in, in the descriptions below. Well, in the United States this week, um, a lot of weird things are always going on here. I wanted to talk about a uh, horrific murder that occurred a week ago in Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida is a former Confederate state. Uh, it's in the southeast corner of the country. Um, shaped like a banana as far as it's it's it is entirely a peninsula and Jacksonville itself um, is in the what they call the panhandle of the state the northern part of the state historically very very racist um, but they have a lot of military bases there a lot of businesses there that draw people from different parts of the state from Alabama from Georgia, from South Carolina, and from Southern and Central Florida, go there to live and work. So um, this city has had a history of a civil rights movement led by teenagers uh, in the 1960s. Uh, some of the research I did over the last few days uh, exposed to me that um, on one campaign in the early 60s to integrate lunch counters, somewhat similar to what happened in Woolworth's lunch counter in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, students went to a, to a particular um, drugstore. And in, in those days, the drugstores would have a place to eat. So it was a combination of a diner and a store. That, that doesn't really exist too much anymore. So what they would do is the whites would be allowed to sit at the diner on the main part of the store and blacks were required to go to the back of the store to a separate diner. And part of this civil rights movement of the 60s was the movement to eliminate this disparate treatment toward black Americans. So people would go to the white section of the diner, sit down and ask for to be served. And they would be, and they would be refused service. And then they, they would not get up for hours. So that's what constituted the sit-in. Okay. So Jacksonville was uh, a center of the sit-ins in Florida. This is not known too much because most of the attention on sit-ins has been either in Greensboro or in states like Alabama or Mississippi. Okay. So one Sunday, it was, I think it was in 1964, 65, um, the white racists mobilized against the sit against the sit-ins at at the diners. Um, they got these weapons called axe handles. So all axes have a handle. The axe is a is a wedge is the blade, and it it is fused to a handle made of wood. So in the South, it's not unusual still today to see white people, not black people, not Latin people, not Asian people, but white people with axe handles in their pickup trucks. They put it on a rack behind the driver. They also are allowed to put guns back there, back in, in their car. As long as the gun is seen, it's legal. So it is, it, is a, it is a scene of intimidation and a threat. So what they did on this, on this I think it was a Sunday or Saturday, the white races assembled outside the downtown area and formed a wedge in the, in the city. And they had ax handles to beat the black youth and the black, the black community who were there demonstrating. So this is the viciousness of Jacksonville's history. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, last Sunday, Saturday, uh, this racist went to, uh, he got his gun, his AR-15 and his Glock loaded up and went to the black university. There's a small black private school or college in Jacksonville. And he, he, he tried to gain entry, but the security guards, I assume that they have, you know, you know what he wants a private school, you know, kind of a close, a close, a kind of a security 
uh, office before he could enter. They refused him entry. So he had planned to go to a black college and wipe out the black students. So he, he was stopped. Uh, he had swastikas written on his pistol and on his AR-15. Mm -hmm. So then he drove over to a Dollar General. Now, come to find out, he worked for Dollar. This man worked for Dollar General. He was an employee of a Dollar General store. Mm -hmm. so, so he went to the store and began to shoot, wound, and kill people, mm -hmm. all them black. Mm -hmm. This is very similar to a, a white youth that went to um, Walmart in Texas near, near, near the border about three or four years ago. Same thing. You go to a store armed with a weapon to shoot people of color. Mm -hmm. Or the white man that two years ago went to Buffalo, a grocery store in, in, in a black neighborhood with the, with the purpose of killing black people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Youth under 20 years old who are support under 25, who are, who are fueled by racist ideology with a violent edge toward blacks. This appears on the internet frequently. It's not hard to find this nonsense on the internet. And they go there with the intention of murdering black people. And that's what he did. Mm -hmm. And then as usual, instead of fighting out with the police, some some of them will take the arrest and some will just commit suicide um, at at the at the sign of the murder. And that's what this 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 man did. Mm -hmm. So I just want people to know that when you think everything's okay with the United States and that there's integra integration and peace, no. At any time, African-Americans, Mexican-Americans can be murdered by a white racist. Mm -hmm. They have, you know, they, because of the proliferation of guns, mm -hmm. gun proliferation and racist ideology mm -hmm. allows us to, to continue. Mm -hmm. And all the all the capital say, "Oh, we mourn for your family. You have our thoughts and prayers." Yeah, people are dead. Mm -hmm. Thoughts and prayers don't help. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to report on that with you, mm -hmm. Abraham. This is uh, <clears throat> what I've heard described as a slow civil war in the United States, and mainly these mass shootings are done by white supremacists. I think there's a study uh, <clears throat> done on it to that effect as well. I think Jason Andrew has done some research in that matter. Good. And it's uh, a matter of uh, preparing ourselves for self-defense, just like the Jewish Bund did against, you know, the Bagramists, you know, in, in Russia and in uh, in Poland. <clears throat> you know, you've got to have uh, any uh, cultural communal center, any event, you know, has to have its own security. And has to be most, capable of dealing Most with definitely, like but that. now... But now we're even seeing, to me, what we're seeing is with with or without permits to carry concealed weapons, people just have to be armed. Yeah. For for personal protection, not for aggression, but for self defense. Yeah. And, and I know I know this is a thin line we want to be careful of crossing, not you know be a thin line to come too close to the red, too close to the third rail, as they say in front of the subway. Mm -hmm. But in these situations, let me give, let me give you an example. When the situation went down in, well, no, let's go back to this one. Let's start with this one. Were it not for the security guards, we're usually not on our side when it comes to, you know, grocery stores and protecting private property and that nonsense. Mm -hmm. Were it not for the security guard at the black private school, he would have come in and committed a mass murder right there. Yeah. You see, we see what he had planned it. That's where he went first. Yeah. Same thing happened in Buffalo about two years ago. The security guard opened fire on the gunman, mm -hmm. but he did not have a bulletproof vest, so he was killed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, that what you're talking about, there was some level of self-defense present. Mm -hmm. That's not enough. At, at the, at, at at the black college and at the grocery store, okay? And using security guards are there to protect the property of of the um, employer. On the latter being the store and its food and its products, on the former being the 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 the, the um the students. Mm -hmm. And they turned it that to me they turned into their opposite mm -hmm. and they became protectors of the black community. So, mm -hmm. you know, just Yes. Sometimes things can switch rather, rather quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think that in these instances, mm -hmm. if people 
are armed and know how to use arms properly, yeah. they could possibly defend themselves. That's, all, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I can understand that would be necessary now, you know, because, you know, security guards at any sort of commercial establishment are there, one, to prevent theft and to protect the property, you know. And right. that's it, you know, if, you know, uh, you know, a shooter comes along, you know, that security guard is going to run away, <laughs> you know, because it's not his job. So, you know, you got to be prepared to defend yourself. Yeah, I've got to be prepared to defend myself. You know, like even physically, you know, I've been attacked a couple of times this year. You know, it's uh, the time is, is happening now. You know, we're if you confront, if you affront, affront any sort of conventional wisdom, you know, somebody, you know, like who doesn't want <clears throat> to recognize your rights, they're going to become violent. You know, they turn violent right. you know, because they cannot accept it. You know, they just cannot accept you know, that there would be, you know, like an equivalent right to be held, you know, by a black man or a Jewish man, you know, like they just don't understand it. You know, it's just impossible for them to comprehend. And so they become violent. You know, it's like an, it's kind of a psychotic, you know, behavior that's emerging. Yes, now. yes, yes, psychotic behavior. Yeah. But um, allow me to mention one more thing about security guards. Yeah. In San Francisco, California, I would say about six months ago, a gentleman named Bunko Brown, Bunko Brown, was a transsexual male living on living on the streets of San Francisco. He went to a, a Walmart in San Francisco, and he went to the shoplift. He did. He went to the shoplift. Mm -hmm. Okay. The security guard confronted Bunko Brown in the store about the shoplifting, mm -hmm. and Bunko Brown surrendered what he had stolen, what he was attempting to steal. Okay. Yeah. But some kind of sc scuffle broke out. Security guard went outside the store, shot Bronco Brown in the back outside the store. He had left the store. Weird. Well, so he, and, and the DA, the DA would not prosecute the security guard. Ah. Uh -huh. So we had, you know, we, we had this, you know, this thing of this, this, this vast laid nature of these security guards. He had the reason that, look, you got the merchandise. It's over. Yeah. Let him let the guy leave, yeah. but he's supposed to get bad, and you know get tough. So Bunko Brown is dead. He yeah. had no gun, he had no knife, he had no club, he had nothing. Uh, so Bunko Brown guard, uh, probably claimed self defense in any case. You know. well, I'm sure you can say. I'm not sure what he claimed, but the DA did not prosecute. The DA just, I mean, whatever he claimed. Yeah, he was Bunko Brown leaving the store. He had left the store. He was outside the store. It's like the police who judge, you know, whether or not the police turn themselves into judges and they decide, you know, who's going to be, you know, convicted or not. You know, it's like an abrogation of of power. The police have assumed this power, which uh, is not their right. Right. You know, exactly. It's, you know, like a, it, it, you know, they've turned, you know, the whole judicial system upside down because they're supposed to be, you know, at the bottom, you know, and they place themselves at the top. And they consider they sure themselves do. to be the executioner as well, you know. <laughs> you know, wow. Okay. Well, so yeah. that's so that's that's my report from the United States and from North America. There's a whole, whole, whole lot more going on, but I wanted to share that tragic story with people, our listeners, and our viewers to know hmm. that when you want to immigrate here, if you want to come here and live, if you think it's the best place in the world, please think again. <laughs> please think again I'm not saying don't come mm -hmm. but if you think you're going to live here in peace and quiet and make all this money and live in a real nice place and you have you know uh, milk and honey and cheese uh, please, th please think again because I'll give you examples of no fewer than uh, 9, 3 15 people who have been killed by racist cops or security guards. The racist cops, security guards, or white racists, white men with guns who hate black people and want to kill us mm -hmm. simply because we're black. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Please, please think again because that's what you're going to see here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, refugee migrants, you know, would be, would do much better, you know, if they just organized themselves and made a revolution in their home countries. No well, the matter right there and then. <laughs> Let me give an example of that, brother. Mm -hmm. There's a young man from Nicaragua. He was living in the San Fernando Valley, a suburb of LA. You know, living on the margins. He had immigrated from Nicaragua. Was doing some, you know, just whatever work he could find from the Nicaraguan community. You know, people, 
you know, people come to their come to the country, they find the community they came from, they start asking for work. You know how, how that goes, okay? Mm-hmm. So he peed. So he found a job. One day, the store owner wanted to cover up some tagging from a local gang. Well, guess what? He was covering, up, covering the tagging. The gang saw him covering up, and they murdered him on the spot. He's dead. Yeah. Just for just for doing what his employer wanted him to do. Mm-hmm. He would hurt nobody. He didn't mess with nobody. He was just doing a, doing a job. He's dead. Of course, there are no suspects. No one ever was brought to gay. So this is an example. Again, I'm telling all our all, all your viewers, mm-hmm. if you come here expecting a good life, mm-hmm. just expect the opposite. And that way you're prepared for what may happen to you. Everything might go well for you. You might get a job. You might get a green card, get citizenship. It all may happen to you. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that. But don't come here expecting the police to be nice to you or to crime, not, crime or gangs not to... Uh, target you because this young man here mm. he's dead but simply painting doing some painting outside mm-hmm. he was murdered on the spot mm-hmm. yep. well i i have a, an example of uh, what happens when there is a what seems to be you know an actual revolution you know like here's the uh letter from the government of niger expelling the french ambassador all right that's great <laughs> if i can I find it, it again you I, love, know. I love it yeah it's incredible you know like I love, I just is, love you this know, stuff, you know, you can't the, make this up. With the government, you know, like icon, you know, like at the top and everything, you know, like secretary, secretariat general. It's in French, of course, you know, because that's the, the colonial language. Okay, so the Minister of the Ex- Foreign Affairs and of uh, Cooperation of the Republic of Niger present their compliments to the Minister of Europe and the and Foreign Affairs of the Republic of France, and the honor of informing that in reaction to the note number so-and-so of uh, August the 8th, addressed the former ambassador of Niger by the Minister of Europe and the Affairs and Strange Affairs, of, uh, and, and the refusal of the ambassador of France in the city to respond to the invitation by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the government of Niger, uh, and other sort of matters, and contrary to the interests of Niger, the th- competent authorities, Nigerian, have decided to withdraw their agreement to allow this ambassador, Mr. Sylvain Itti, and uh, to ask him to leave the territory of Niger in 48 hours. <laughs> okay, you know, that's, that's oh, what, you know, like you call uh, a change. That's a change. You know, and uh, it's it demonstrates that change is possible at the very least. And uh, we wish the best, uh, I think, for the continuation of the revolution there and the elaboration of the revolution to include the uh, civil society and all the people. And uh, right, 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 very important. Of the, uh, you know, the change that's happening in uh, Gabon as well now. Well, you know, the Gabon, 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 Gabon is just like, it's even more egregious there because you have yeah. one family who's ruled the country for like 70 years and they're all, they're all comparators with the French. I mean, this is like, you know, this is going back like to Bob, the baby doc and Papa doc. Uh, aha, uh-huh, the French, there you go again, yeah. you know. Um, their method of this family rule after the so-called independence is granted or fought for and won. Yeah. And in Gabon, I mean, it, it just seems to me about this. See, we gotta we gotta get over this this elections nonsense. Mm-hmm. What were elections? Well, elections can always be rigged, and so what? There's elections. That 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 that, that, that doesn't mean that it's ruled by the people. No, it doesn't. Yeah. It really doesn't. I mean, yeah. elections are are a part of the, democ- of the bourgeois democracy of a capitalist system, and they can be rigged or they can be influenced in such a way. Uh, yeah, For example, yeah. the United States, third party, a third party cannot win in the United States unless it's a really mass movement. I mean, you got to have hundreds of millions of people have a third party win because it's they get the, 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 the rules are set such that you can't even qualify on the election. So th- this family has been, has been, re- le- has been, has been ruling, um, uh, Gabon for 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 decades, fifty three years, and, I think. Yeah, and they, you know, it's about time they got the hell up out of there. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, it's just time to go. Yeah, the way elections are set up, there, you, <laughs> it's, know, you, you got to go. Elections are just go. a race of the big bucks. It's, it's just time to go. Is, yeah. It's time. I'm sorry, it's just time to go. Yeah. Your time is up. 
You've been ripping people off, stealing, lying, pillaging the population, giving the money to French. We know they've been giving the money to French. We know this. You ain't have to have any evidence. That's how they rule. Yeah. And now everybody's all, oh, no, we're upset about this. No, be happy. <laughs> be happy. At least this one, this, this it's over. Sorry. <laughs> I should have cut you off. It's like it's too much, you know? Yeah, yeah. Incredible. Wow. It's quite a wave happening. You know, this is uh, catching on, you know, and and the yes. uh, uh, ECOWAS, <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, is not able to stop it's it. It's catching you know? on. It's as good as catching on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's catching on like a like, like a cold, like a virus. It's just spreading, you know. Well, and imagine, whatever, you know, like the military of those ECOWAS countries that are Nigeria, like threatening, you know, Niger. Oh, you know, the yeah. military, you know, what are they thinking right now? They're thinking, you know, like, whoa, wait a second, we're not getting in a war, you know, like with four other countries. <laughs> First of all, Niger is bigger than Nigeria, you know, like to begin with. It sure is. And so, you know, like, That's so they're thinking, you know, like, you know, like do we want to get involved in another war, you know, like for the countries? Maybe not, you know, like, and if, you know, this government is trying to force us to do so, you know, like maybe we should get rid of this government, you know, like, let's do this. You know, you, you know, know, you know, you, you know, you hit a very good point there. And, I, and at this point, if I were a, if I were a civilian government, I'd be kind of concerned. <laughs> you know, wait a minute. This, 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 this contagion may spread to my country. Yeah. The government could take me out and no problems. Yeah. I ain't got no help here. Yeah. What am I gonna do? Yeah, you're right. You're, if I were yeah. if I were a Nigerian military, I would say, hmm. <laughs> hmm why, why should I why should we get involved in this? Yeah. Look over here. Yeah. Look over here. What do you what what what's up with that? Why are we involved in this stuff here? Yeah. Because as I understand it, there's no real support for an ECOWAS invasion within Niger uh, Nigeria. There's no real support for it. This is only being done by the government. So this could possibly lead to the overturning of that government by mass demonstrations. It could. Yeah. It could. Yeah, we should look forward to mass demonstrations beginning now. Yeah. Yeah, this we is, we, uh... we actually if anybody here is it, it has to get can get this video to Nigeria, yeah. get to Nigeria right away. Yeah. We need to help. <laughs> we need to we need to support any insurrections or rebellions by the people against the Akawas governments and against any kind of infiltration and and, and um attacks against 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 uh Niger. There should be no attacks by Nigerian government. If you're a Nigerian soldier, don't fight. If you're a Nigerian uh uh intellectual spread the word if you're a worker, if you're if if you're from Nigeria, organize demonstrations. You need to do this. Hmm. You need to do this because if we do this, and you can stop this in this in this invasion. You'll be you'll make a great historical move to bring peace to Africa. Hmm. Your government wants war hmm. to support the United States and France, and you know that war does not serve your interests. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, like you know, like <clears throat> Africans being you know turned into mercenaries to fight against other Africans. It's, yes, you know, like just a, no good. Know, like a line that should not be crossed. You know, like the, no it way. Not, you know, exactly. You know, that's we like you know, talk, back when we can have you know, negotiations. When, we yeah. can have meetings. We can do anything you want. Do not go to war against another African country because your government says do it. No, yeah. don't do it. Yeah, it's, you're only serving France, United States, Great Britain, Germany. They want to. They want to destabilize your, those countries so they get control of those resources. Yeah. That's we need to exactly, no, right. Thank you, Dr. Weisfield. Thank you. That's exactly what was done, you know, during the slavery. You know, like one one nation, one African nation, you know, was paid, you know, to go and enslave another African nation and then sell them off, you know, to the Europeans right. to go to North America and South America. You know, that that was, you know, like how, how you know Africa was sliced up and eaten, you know, by imperialism at, and colonialism at that time. You know, it's it's just not permissible. This is not, you know, something that can be tolerated. You know, and uh, I think the military of all those countries, you know, of ECOWAS, you know, should and should be expected, you know, to recognize that. If not, then they would be war criminals, you know, and they, and they cannot accept, you know, being turned into mercenaries, you know, for Western imperialism in that manner. You know, like. Very well said. Very well Niger, said, Dr. You know, Walsh. Like That's exactly showing right. The example is showing the way forward, you know, and they're showing how it can be done. You know, like, you know, the, you know, the only question is, you know, like, <clears throat> you know, one commentator I saw, you know, like was asking, you know, if the uh, the military leaders, you know, have done, you know, a, a very, you know, peaceful transition, actually, 
if they're capable of running the country and if they know what to do economically and if they know what to do in terms of uh, political theory, you know, that's the question. You know, who are these people? You know, we don't know much about true. them. You know, what's going to be very happening. true, very true. So very just, and, that, to... and I think that's a, that's a legitimate question that can be asked. It's not being asked to undermine. It's asking to, for clarification, that's all. Yeah. 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 But I think they've made one step forward, you know, which is, which is you know, decent. You know, they've agreed to a three-year timetable to hold uh, general elections uh, in the coming period. So, you know, they're not declaring themselves, you know, to be uh, an, uh, with unlimited power. They've put limitations right. on themselves already, you know. So, the, you know, that's a good indication. Now, let's see what they come up with you know, as an economic program, because they're going to be under sanctions, you know. So what are they going to do? You know. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. OK. Well, well, they should. What what should happen is if BRICS is, a, if BRICS is about anything. They should be giving some aid and some financial support to these governments. If BRICS is really about something, yeah. and they have a new a new a new development bank, how about give them a a, a non interest loan for a how many billions of dollars for thirty years? But I'm just saying, you know, right now that BRICS thing need to show they mean mean business for people who are under sanction, like Zimbabwe, you know, um, uh, uh, Niger. Niger, other African countries were under sanctions just for being African countries are under sanctions. Yeah, that's why, that's why they're under the sanctions because they're in Africa and they're saying no, we, we, no, you know, we don't want the UK or the French French to dominate us. Yeah. So they put so they put them under sanctions. And just everybody knows, Dr. Wisefield, there is no law for sanctions. No, there isn't. There is uh -huh. no sanctions book. Like, if you do sanctions, you must do this. I checked. Anybody can put any amount of sanctions they want and do whatever they want to them. Like Nigeria cutting the electricity to Niger. What a crime. Uh -huh. What a sick crime, cutting off electricity to a country. Yeah. That's a really low blow. Yeah. Yeah. Hospitals, yeah. research labs. Yeah. Food, you can't, refrig can't refrigerate your food. Pumps, water pumps, you know, like... Thank you. Water pumps. You know, everything is shut down. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, I mean, for that reason alone, people in Nigeria take the right stand against your government. Demand that they demand that they end the sanctions. Nigeria people must rise up and demand in the sanctions against the, the your brothers in Niger. They've done nothing to you. They've done nothing to Nigeria. Why would Nigeria cut off the water? I mean, the electricity. Why? Mm. There's no reason for this. This is they're declaring war on Niger. Mm. Nigerians have to rise up and make demands. Civil society, labor, youth, the elderly, the retired the military people stand up, demand the end of these sanctions. Mm. Because you wouldn't want that done to you. No, you, no, you would not. Yeah. Okay. So, um, looking forward to our next talk next. I think so. Uh, uh, next week, you know, and. Uh, you know, there's so much that's happening, you know, that we need to be talking, you know, every week like this. You know, it's incredible. I think so. Yes, yeah. I agree. Okay. Good. I'm enjoying this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wise. We appreciate talking to you. Yeah. Have a good, oh, and next week, let's catch up with uh, with uh, your with your, with your your case. Yeah, we'll see what's happening with that. But, you know, <clears throat> I'm still resolved, you know, to continue in the way that I said before, you know. There you go. Okay. Come to All right. Conclusion. This is a juridical battle. That we're fighting with the Zionist lobby here. And that's right. the sense, you know, like free Palestine. And that's all I wrote, you know, and the free Palestine. Oh, okay. So you wrote exactly. Yeah. Next okay. week. Take care. Thank you.